The next thing I want to talk about is the AutoCAD file formats and extensions. There are several file formats that AutoCAD can output to and they have several different file extensions. So what do I mean by file extension? Well, a file extension is a string of characters which is usually at the end of a file name, usually preceded by a full stop, and it indicates the format of the file. Uh, so for example, a Word document generated in Microsoft Word will have a .doc or .docx at the end. And this tells the computer that it's a Word document and that it needs to find Office Word to open it. In AutoCAD, when you save your drawing, it will save it automatically as a DWG file. And that's the standard CAD drawing file. AutoCAD by default will actually save two files. It will save the DWG and next to it, it will save a BAK, a backup file. This file is identical to the DWG file. And if your original file becomes corrupt or unusable, you can just rename the .bak uh, to DWG and it will open up just the same as the original drawing. This is a really useful feature. OK, next up we have a DWT file. This is an AutoCAD drawing template file. We'll actually be covering template files in more detail in a later session. But just to say that template files contain all the setup parameters for certain types of drawing and you can make your own template file customised to your needs. That means that when you start a drawing on a new file, you can start it from that template and all the settings will be just as you want them. A DWF type file extension is a drawing web format. This is used when you want to create a drawing that is for use on the internet or otherwise not editable. This type of file contains features that allow users to view drawings on the web without having AutoCAD on their computer. You can also publish drawings to DWF and send it to clients. The files are smaller and more intelligent than PDFs. However, I must say that PDFs are a more useful file to send to people if you want them to print out your drawings. DXF is an industry standard CAD file and stands for Drawing Exchange Format. This is a very standard format that is used by many different CAD and graphics programs. This allows users to import and export drawings from different CAD packages, i.e. Vectorworks, to AutoCAD or to WYSIWYG. It's important to remember that when you use DXF format, some objects may change their appearance when reopened and may display incorrectly. OK, the last one that we're going to talk about is an SV dollar sign. If you ever see this, this is basically the automatic save file. As I stated before, AutoCAD will automatically save your work within a predetermined time frame. This is set in the options menu. And you can also tell AutoCAD where you want the autosave files to go. Most computers are set to save to the Windows temp folder. And as with all temp files, if you need to recover a drawing from the autosave file, just rename the extension back to DWG. We are now going to launch the AutoCAD application. And this is the icon that you need to find and double click it. You will find that AutoCAD will take a while to load up on the Lippo computers. That's because they are networked versions. And that means that they need to go uh, send the information over to the servers, uh, find out if there's enough network licenses available on the dongle. And if there is a spare one, then it will let you launch the application. Also, if you're using a laptop to run AutoCAD, then you're going to need to invest in an external mouse. AutoCAD is notoriously difficult to use with just a trackpad and you're going to need to use the scroll wheel and the middle mouse wheel click for quite a lot of the functions. Okay, so I'm just going to double click on this icon and AutoCAD will load up. And once it's loaded, you will find that you are presented with a start tab. So on this start tab, there are three main columns. There is a get started column on the left hand side and that contains a large start drawing button. And if we were to click on there, we would start a new document. Underneath that, we have a drop down templates menu and we'll talk more about that in a later session. But this is where we can start a drawing using a default uh, template that is predefined by AutoCAD. 
We also have open file menus and all that sort of thing. In the center we have a recent documents menu and I don't have any recent documents at the moment but if I did this is where they would show up and I can start them from these from this panel. And on the right hand side we have a connect menu which is a sign in menu for AutoCAD A360 which is their cloud based service. Okay so we're going to click on this start drawing button and you'll see that we start up a new drawing and we're presented with the interface. Now you can be forgiven to think that this all looks rather daunting but don't worry we're going to go through everything that's on the screen and have a little look. Every drawing that you open opens up in a new tab and you can see here that our new drawing is called Drawing 1 and all the tabs line up along the top here just like Chrome or Internet Explorer or Safari. And you can even click on the little plus and you open up a new drawing. Uh, you can press it on the cross and it will just close back up again. All this sort of thing is fairly familiar hopefully in terms of a tab based system. OK, let's close that. And down in the bottom left we have three more tabs. And they're a bit like pages, very similar to Microsoft Excel. We have the model space, which is this big white area here. It's a bit difficult to see at the moment because we've got the grid on. So let's just switch that off. Down here we have a load of icons, that's called the status bar, we'll go through that shortly but this is the button for the grid and we're just going to click that off just so that you can see what's going on. So this white area here is basically where we do our drawing, it's the canvas and it's a 3D space, it's an infinite space and down here we have an axis, it's actually called a UCS which stands for user coordinate system but again more on that later. You may remember from your maths at school that X goes across and Y goes up and Z, the third dimension, is actually going into the screen at the moment. So at the moment we're seeing a 2D view. The next two tabs are for page layouts. So what you're presented with is a page and this is where we can lay out our drawings ready for either printing on paper or exporting to PDF. OK, so let's go back to the model view. The next thing I want to show you is the command line that lives at the bottom of the screen in the centre and this is where we can type shortcuts uh, and sometimes we have other options where we can type commands into AutoCAD. In the top right hand corner we have something called a view cube. Now we'll look at this much more when we start to draw in 3D but I'll just show you what it does. If we click on this cube then basically it allows us to turn our screen round and then we can see our drawing in any orientation we wish. This is also replicated in a menu in the top left hand side where it says top. If we click on there we can see that we have the same selection uh, of the different orientations. So there are two ways of doing the same thing and that's just because the view cube is quite new uh, and the menu on the left is the original way of doing it. Next door to that we have the Visual Styles drop down menu. This again is the legacy version. It's now also available on the ribbon menu. In the top left hand corner we have a big red A and that's called the application button. As you can see along the top of the ribbon menu we have buttons such as home, insert, all the sort of things you'd expect to find but there's no file button and that's where the big red A application menu comes in. When we click on there we see everything that we'd expect to find in the file menu. We've got new, open, save, save as, import, export, publish, print, close and options and we can even exit the application altogether. All the sort of things you'd expect. Next to that we have the quick start menu which lists some of the key items from the application button. And at the very end there's a drop down menu and you can switch on and off these buttons. And one of the things that I recommend you switch on actually is the workspace because that then gives you this new sort of readout that shows you the workspace that you're in. So you can see here it says drafting and annotation and that's actually for the 2D workspace. And we can change that, you can see that there's actually a 3D basics and a 3D modeling workspace that we can choose from. And what AutoCAD does is it allows us to change the entire set of tools and the layout depending on the type of drawing that we're going to be doing. So at the moment we want to be in 2D, drafting and annotation, but later on we will be using the 3D modeling workspace. 
Along the top we have the ribbon menu and you can see that this is split into sections. So we have draw, modify, annotation uh, and there's large icons for the most used um, tools. And some of the buttons are split into two so we can have a drop down with more options for that particular tool. There's also a drop down on each panel and that gives us more smaller icons which are sort of less frequently used tools. The ribbon is fully customizable. You can drag out all of these uh, panels. You can move them around, put them where you like. You can even change the order of them. At the top of the screen you can see that we have the drawing title shown in the center and moving further along we have a search bar and AutoCAD is a very good search engine built into it so if you're ever stuck or can't find the tool that you need then I recommend you giving the search a very good try. In addition to that you can see that if you hover your mouse over any of these tools then you get a very useful help box that actually expands to show you exactly how you can use each tool. So a really nice feature that AutoCAD have included. And the last thing I'm going to show you is this little button here. What this does is it allows you to collapse the whole ribbon menu. It collapses in stages. So on the first click you can see that you have these large main menu buttons that show you the panels underneath them. If you click it again, it collapses further to sub-menus and little buttons uh, with the main heading bars at the top there. And then if you just click it a third time, it disappears completely and you're just left with the main headings. And then when you click on the uh, main headings, you end up with the whole ribbon bar as a drop-down menu. Click it once more and it comes back. So if you ever lose your ribbon menu, it's probably worth checking that button first. OK, that's it for this session. In the next recorded tutorial, we will go through the basic tools and modify commands. And we'll also look at setting up the status bar icons.